Well, I'm staring at the screen and I still can't believe why is this not a regular patch. Star Wars The Old Republic Game Update 5.10 is about to be released tomorrow. Today is 10th of December 2018. The patch notes have been released. And because it is a very old tradition, especially for big updates such as this one, we are going to take a close look at what's in the patch notes. Although, because I've read them several times already to make myself familiar with every single change in note, I'm going to do the highlights, not the highlights that you see actually on your screen right now, but the highlights overall from the patch notes. And there will be more things for you to discover on your, cell, on your own if you check the links uh, under the video and uh, the text there. Most of these things, if you follow my YouTube channel and website Vogue.com closely, you have already uh, read about, you've already seen the in-depth previews because um, bits and pieces of information has been released uh, in the past weeks and, and actually even months rela related to different things. So let's begin with the highlights as they're uh, presented on the screen behind me. New storylines and daily area on OSIS 2. Promised by Bioware, completely different storylines, as in both of them will be on the same place, but from different point of view, both Empire and Republic will be struggling uh, for, uh, let's call it, uh, dominance against each other, and they will be competing against each other once again. Continue your adventure at level 70 on the desolate Jedi planet of Ossus. Ossus is not new planet for the expanded universe now called Star Wars Legends, but it appears for the very first time in Star Wars The Old Republic. The video game. It has been featured in the um, the second miniseries, I believe, from the 5,000 years before the movie's comic book series, uh, Tales of the Jedi. I believe it was the major title. Holy crap, I'm actually uh, blanking here. Never mind, I've read the series three times, the, the series three times already, so uh, the only requirement for you to be able to enjoy Ossus is to have a level 70 character. You don't need to have Kotet and Kotfi completed, you don't even need the origin stories. However, many things will be automatically completed for you and you will get a warning before that happens, of course, should you choose to create a level 70 character or Maybe you've leveled through flashpoints, PvP, or something else that doesn't involve story. If you decide to bring your level 70 character through Ossus, everything before that related to the main story progression will be automatically chosen for you. Primarily light side choices for the Republic and primarily dark side choices uh, for the Empire. I do have actually a special link under the video to show you some of these main choices and what decisions your character would have made if you go with the auto completion. If you have already completed those stories for yourself with your character, all of your choices will be kept and uh, the, for the future events will happen accordingly to these things. Master mode, gods from the machine, defending the dangerous, uh, defeating, not defending, holy crap, the dangerous family of droid super weapons from IOCAT will require more skill than ever. Further below in the patch notes, you will see, and if you've checked out my uh, reports from PTS, you already know that the veteran and story mode versions of the uh, IOCAT operation have been nerfed because a new nightmare, sorry, master mode has been presented now with a much higher level of difficulty. Guild perks and guild leveling and guild interface and complete guild rework, I should actually call it. Let's let's start with the guild perks. I do have separate articles on the website and a couple of video overviews for the guild changes. There will be more after tomorrow because the patch will be live with everything finished. Some of these things that were previously announced uh, as part of the guild revamp and uh, changes uh, system did not actually make it live for 5.10, so they will be rescheduled for the beginning of next year. Guild perks. Players can now slot guild perks into various rooms on their guild uh, flagship, and these perks provide a range of benefits, allowing guilds to customize how they play. Guild leveling is the major progression for guilds now. Guilds will now level up earning guild XP from Galactic Conquest. Galactic Conquest has been even further tied together with guild progression. Leveling provides a, ran uh, uh, a range of benefits from access to greater guild perks to higher XP, CXP and reputation rewards. Guild interface. The guild UI has been completely reworked and includes new functionalities such as the guild log, guild inspect, and guild mail. Masterwork gear is a brand new tier 5 gear 
with two versions as usual. The highest one available will be uh, item rating 258. That's the gold version, also known as legendary. And the purple version, also known as uh, epic, is going to be item rating five, uh, 252. It will be available through PvP and PV as well, with various ways, but the best one is obviously through the new master mode of God's Only Machine. If you want to gear up as fast as possible, doing the Nightmare uh, Operation that has just been released with 5.10 is the best way for you. Otherwise, you can even rely on uh, Galactic Command in those horrible random crates. They will have a chance at rank 300 uh, to start dropping some of these... Um, masterwork gear pieces. The PvP challenge system has been teased and shown in bits and pieces on PTS. It allows you to create custom PvP matches against other groups of players. This is uh, the last bit of the summer of PvP, although it's now deep into the winter. But it kind of relates to the, let's say, um, to the summer of PvP and specifically to the Rishi Stronghold, which was kind of designed with PvP in mind. Double event returns, although not tomorrow, but instead it's going to go live on 28th of December and it will run until uh, New Year's Eve, 31st of December. Scrolling down to the general changes, let's see what are the more important and interesting things. The amount of guild member ranks has been increased as well as the limit for guild rank names, uh, uh, limit for guild message of the day. The limit for guild description, guild rank description, the guild flagship has been decreased to 8 million credits. It doesn't cost 50 million credits anymore, just 8 million. Of course, you still have to unlock a bunch of rooms. But be careful if you are unlocking the rooms for the guild ship in relation to the guild perks. I do actually have a guide for that because I don't intend to go into details here. But just be careful, you don't need to unlock all of the rooms for the full ship if you want to take full benefit of these rooms. Guilds no longer get bonus experience and reputation earned based on the size. So if you have a capped guild in terms of members, it doesn't matter anymore. The only thing that matters will be the newly introduced guild leveling system. You level by completing conquest objectives. Guilds will now receive a 15% bonus to all conquest points earned once they have committed to invade the planet, which means that... Some guilds who prefer to commit to a planet later on in the week will now be not exactly punished, but they are not, they are not actually going to get uh, benefit from the committing early. So Power wants to uh, give you an incentive to commit to a specific planet and yield as early as possible. The following conquest objectives have been added to every conquest, and I'm actually not going to read them for you. You can pause and read them on the screen here. Uh, just a small change for the classes in combat. Gear bolster for ranked and unranked warzone has been increased to the new lower tier of tier 5, 252. The previous one was 242. Once again, one tier below the maximum. Wow, where is just repeating the same? Augment bolster for ranked and unranked warzones has been increased to item rating 236, up from 208. This is actually a big jump here. In the crew skill sections, Bioware corrected an issue where some gathering nodes on Dromukas has higher skills requirement than intended, and if you are a crew skills farmer, you might actually be interested to learn what the changes furthermore to the cyber tech, synth weaving, and treasure hurting are. These are just fixes, nothing really major. As I've told you already, the story, the story and veteran mode for Gods from the Machine have been made easier. A bunch of changes and fixes, more like uh, bug fixes in the section for items and economy. Again, you can check the full patch notes below the video. Uh, let's see. The additional character slot unlock in the cartel market has had its description updated to properly reflect the current character slot limits because Bioware changed that several times over the years. And although I don't know exactly what the cartel market item says at the moment, I've never paid attention and I've never used, never used that item, I believe. Once or twice, never mind. Um, I'm not sure what it says right now. Uh, what else do we have? Let's scroll down and see a few fixes for the missions and NPCs category, where Bauer has collected corrected issue when in some situations the bounty hunters were unable to interact with the escape pod, which actually prevented one of the class missions from progressing further. 
enemies in the Eternal Championship now grant more command experience. Okay, so over the years, since I've released my guides and updated them more than once, actually, uh, for the Eternal Championship, I've done this with just two of my classes because they were always the best geared ones, and those are the ones that I'm best experienced with. So I did them with the Sentinel and Marauder, of course, and with my um, Gunnery Commando. Many people have been telling me over the years that this encounter is impossible, that encounter is bugged, or a plethora of other reasons why they are not able to finish this. I'm always telling you, you're either undergeared, you're either not experienced enough with the mechanics, or Bauer changed something and unintentionally bugged something. Now this is a change that might actually result in a bug, because they've changed something in the Eternal Championship, but this change, if not properly uh, tracked, it may actually lead to something else bugged somewhere inside the Eternal Championship. So keep that in mind. Every time something is changed, there is a possibility that something else might be bugged. And it's not happening just with Bauer. It's just an unwritten rule, I believe, with pretty much every game and game developer. <laughs> the Masterwork Data Crystal, which is a brand new currency introduced uh, for the new gear, have been added as a reward to various weekly missions, which means, as I've told you earlier, you can earn the tier 5 gear not just by farming the Nightmare Gods from the Machine, sorry, damn it, Master Mode Gods from the Machine, but you can also do dailies on OSS, uh, regular day, um, PvE missions, as well as PvP. The P5 MK4 will now count toward their respective conquest objectives and in, as intended. Apparently it was bugged. Two notes for the war zones in the general section. Lower the pop rate for Van Dien Hutboat to be equal with other war zones. Bauer does that with every new war zone released, and in this time it lasted very, very long. Since 592 was released, I believe, that's when Van Dien appeared for the first time. Um, this war zone has had higher chance to pop, I believe it was 30% higher chance to pop over the other war zones because it's new and because every regular and veteran PvP player wanted to experience this one more than the others that they have been playing for one, two, six years. Players carrying the hotbow can once again use their crowd control breakability as intended. Ah, this is apparently not that quick overview. There is so much more in each one of the categories related to the new story, to the branching of the new story, uh, related to the previous choices that you've made in your own stories with characters, uh, the new tier 5 gear, the guild changes, the PvP changes, so much more explained already in written form and in some cases in video overviews as well on Vogue.com. Check them out. And of course, after the game update goes live tomorrow, I will add more and new things to help get things even more clear and even more precise. Also, Tomorrow, as soon as the servers go up, if I'm at home uh, after work, of course, and uh, the internet is uh, okay, I should be able to start the patch day live stream. It's been a very long time since the last Star Wars The Old Republic live stream that I did for you guys. And I'm hoping that 5.10 will be a great opportunity for us to resume a more regular relationship between me with the live streams and you as my audience. I haven't completed my movement yet. Some of you probably are aware that I'm moving home. I bought a new home uh, a few months ago and I've been busy with renovation stuff. So that's one of the main reasons why I had to uh, pretty much cancel every live stream activity because it was really uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable for me tomorrow as well, but that's a side note. I hope to see as many of you as possible. I would love to see both new faces and old ones tomorrow for a greeting. And of course, I'll do my best to show you the story with very minimal interruptions and minimalistic commentary from me. That's it for 5.10. Thank you guys for joining me for yet another traditional classic changes overview. See you in the next one.